So, I'm going to be completely honest with you, I was supposed to upload a video about Puzzle 4 today, and I was already uploading the video, but then my Twitter notifications began exploding with mentions, actually go follow me on Twitter. I checked my phone and as soon as I saw this, I was like, Nani, you cannot be serious. So I will postpone my video on Puzzle 4 for Friday, I hope you understand. But now let's stop the chit chat and let's get into the video. I said that I was going to make a video on everything related to Doom Eternal, so here you go, I never break my promises, my Spartans. If you guys didn't know, it's tough to wait delay Doom Eternal so that I, Midnight the Spartanoo, could reach 100k subscribers before the game comes out. So subscribe if you're new, leave a comment on what do you think about this trailer, share this video with your cats, and let's get this video to 5k likes for the dude Revenant. Continuemos. So, I guess that we live in a society. Now that Doom Eternal was delayed to March 2020, I figured that id Software was going to release more trailers on the game. On the marketing side of Doom Eternal, we haven't really seen that much activity. The last big drop in Doom Eternal news was back in QuakeCon, which was three months ago. And it's not like Doom Eternal is going to flop, and Bethesda is not investing any money into the marketing side of the game. Doom Eternal is the definition of video game hypeness, it's basically the Halo 3 of modern gaming, and it will be a success, in my opinion. So it was really weird that it's software and Bethesda weren't really marketing and pushing Doom Eternal that much. Yes! even a month before its original release, so I guess that the whole plan on delaying the game has been on the board for quite some time already. But hey, that's a theory, a doom thing, so I really think that you can expect more activity on the marketing side of the game. But hey, I could be wrong too, so do not take it for granted. You would think that this trailer doesn't reveal anything new and doesn't add anything to the narrative that we already have on the game, and that's where you are wrong. One of my superpowers is that I overanalyze everything and anything, every little detail, every single frame, everything. I always overanalyze it. Just like here, we are first shown the Marauder up close and in the next frame it's shown further away, so I guess that here the player in control activated a little quick time event of some sorts. But anyways, now we know that the Cyber Mancubus is going to be back. At first we thought that we were only going to get one type of Mancubus in Doom Eternal, but now that we are shown the Eternal Cyber Mancubus, we can assume that the UAC Corporation didn't take any breaks on continuing their genetically modified demon programs, just like how they turned the UAC employees into revenants, and just how they equipped the Mancubus with more powerful cannons in Doom 2016. And now that the Eternal Mancubus design has two glowy eyes, this Eternal Cyber Mancubus looks more like a Terminator that is about to destroy you, or get destroyed by the Doomslayer, and we all know what's truly about to happen there. I also love how this marauder is minding his own business pretty much, and then suddenly, a gargantuan demon one punches him. He was like, ah la 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 la, uh, nani? We also get to take a good look on the sandbox design of the game, and some features that I talked about in the past, like with the cyber demon or the eternal tyrant. Doom 2016 set up a trend on introducing the Cyber Demon as a big unbeatable boss in the trailer, and Doom Eternal did the same thing back on A3, but my speculation was that now that Doom Eternal is taking heavy references from Doom 2, the Cyber Demon or the Tyrant will function more like a sub-boss or a mini-boss in the game, and that there will be multiple Tyrants scattered throughout the game too, and oh boy, this is so true. We can see here that there are two Tyrants in the same arena. Not only will this be hard as fuck, but we can expect more multiple Tyrant encounters scattered throughout the whole campaign. 
yes, I know that this image is part of the master level bonus for the campaign, where I guess that you will mainly fight inside super hard arenas filled with the toughest demons enemies. Like, uh, look, in this arena alone there are two archviles, one marauder, three fire barons, two tyrants and the demon hunter. This arena is going to be hard as fuck, and you can bet your booty that I will be bidding this in the absolute hardest difficulty setting without even touching my keyboard and mouse. My guess with the multiple tyrants in the campaign is that the USC corporation, just like how they did with the Bulgar demon or the cyber demon in Doom 2016, is that when the whole hell on earth stuff happens and Con Maker, the hell priests and the cult began working together, they began weaponizing more demons and one of the races they weaponized was a tyrant race. And we have seen hints on that too, like the carcass demon and the whiplash demon. They all have UAC type tech fused with their bodies, so I guess that that's what's happening with the tyrants. Is it a bad idea to have multiple tyrants in one encounter? Pfft, claro que no. Que, somos bebés? No! Somos Doom Slayers. Doom is a type of game that makes you want to go to the gym and work out until you are jacked as hell. So these types of encounters are only going to make you be as badass as the Doom Slayer. Doom is basically killing the opacity rates in the world. Thank you, Ed. Very cool. And also, can you please take a look at this and tell me that this is not the coolest thing you have ever seen? They say that if you want to fight monsters from hell, you need to become hell itself. And the Doom Slayer took that phrase quite literally and became a raging flame to Doom Slayer. Supposedly, there's lore behind every single thing in Doom Eternal, so I'm really curious to see what's the lore behind this Hellfire Doom Slayer. And now that we're talking about that, I guess that one UAC employee went and said, I want to become a Revenant, please put me into the Revenant program, but I love trumpets, so please give me a mounted rocket launcher in the form of trumpets, please. And that's how this skin came to be. Hilarious! I know that the classic weapon sound pack was going to be in the game, but man, it does sound and seems to play really cool to be honest. And I'm gonna say it, but the classic minigun sound effect on the heavy assault rifle makes it feel and sound more intimidating. They really need to fix the sounds in the heavy assault rifle for Eternal. It sounds like a peepee gum, pretty much. I know that I said that you should never pre-order games, the gaming industry nowadays is mostly filled with people that only want your money in the most greediest way possible, and pre-ordering is basically just giving them free money in a sense, but I think that with Doom Eternal we should do an exception. The pre-order bonus itself has great value, it gives you lots of in-game digital exclusive content, and it gives you, which is in my opinion, one of the best Doom experiences out there, Doom 64, all for free. All you gotta do is pre-order the game. I think it was a good PR move to add Doom 64 as an incentive for more pre-orders for the game. The last time I played Doom 64 was over a decade ago and I haven't really tried to download it on an emulator for my PC. And to see that they are re-releasing Doom 64 on all consoles just brings a tear into my eye. I will definitely do a review on the game port when it comes out. Because, you know, the latest Doom and Doom 2 ports had some problems here and there, so let's see how much of the original uh, experience still resides on Doom 64 when it comes out on March 20, 2020. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see that in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video, and so case buttons, please let me know what you think about this video down in the comment section. Leave a like if you did, and leave a dislike if you didn't. Links for my social media are all down below, and thanks to all of my Patreons for supporting this channel every single month. Patreon link down below as well. Then again, I guess that we can expect more Doom Eternal content now that there is a huge gap from here to the release date, and if you want to see everything Doom Eternal covered, subscribe to this channel. When the game finally drops, I'm going to be uploading lots and lots of Doom Eternal content, videos on the campaign episodes, lore videos on all of the demons, the Doom Slayer, the weapons, pretty much content on everything Doom Eternal related, but I do not want to become a Doom channel. I do not want to stay as a Doom channel only because I want to grow as a YouTuber and for that I need to expand my horizons. I need to do videos on other content, gaming reviews on other games, VR gameplays because I want to get into VR. I need to do more content, more original content, so expect some changes in the content for the channel. Of course, Doom Eternal is always going to be my baby. Doom Eternal is always going to be a huge part of the channel, but 
but the channel needs to expand so as I said expect more changes on the channel soon. We are experiencing some changes already in the channel and the feedback has been really great and for that I really do appreciate it Miss Buttons. My goal is to reach 10 million subscribers I do not care when, that's just my goal, that's that's my end goal for this channel. Obviously when I reach 10 million subscribers I'm not going to end my YouTube career, but my end goal for this channel is 10 million subscribers. I'm not gonna stop doing videos until I reach 10 million subscribers. Then again, thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you on Friday. Bye. Mwah. 10 million subscribers.